So a Gubon Sayer was basically a free tradesman, a Freemason, somebody who went around and did building and did different jobs for different people. He was freelance. He wasn't tied to anything. But I suppose as he got older he, and married, he would have settled down. So this story is about a very famous Gabon Sayer that lived back in Ring Kaharuk, back closer to the Skellig's Rock than I am. And he had built wonderful castles. Every castle he built was the best castle yet. Nothing was less, everything was more. Every job he had to do with was brilliant. So he got commissioned by the King of Munster, who lived in Limerick, to build the best castle he had ever built. And the Gabon Sayer was getting ready. And his son was old enough to go with him, so for the first time, Gabon Sayer and son went off to build. So on their way, they stayed in a farmhouse where there was two young girls living and working as well, two daughters of the house. One was blonde, and the minute the Gabon Sayer and the son came in, she sat down and she was all interested in about this and that and what was going on in the world and what did they see and where did they come from. But there was a dark-haired girl who wasn't that chatty, but she was very busy in her work and got the table laid and the food out for the, the visitors and everything went smoothly. So the next morning, the Gabon Sayer said to the two girls, he said, you know, one of ye would make a great daughter-in-law and my son is of that age now as well, so maybe we could strike a match. But one advice I'll give to both of you. Always have an old woman's head by the fire Warm yourself with whatever work you do in the morning and, and take a sheepskin to the fair and sell it, but bring it back home with you and the price you sold it for. So the Gabon Sayer and the son headed off to Limerick where they were building the most exquisite castle ever. And of course, the King of Munster was very clever because he wanted the best castle ever. And he had a plan that, that he would kill the Gabon Sayer and his son. So that whatever happened, there would never be as good a castle as the King of Monsters in Ireland ever again. But the Gabon Sayer was watching the King and watching the King talk to himself and watching the way the King would come up and say, is it nearly ready and will this be the best ever? And he kind of got the feeling there was something going on. Irish people are great for getting a, a feeling. So as the castle was being finished, he sent for the King and he said, we nearly have it finished but for the Futa Fata. And only without the Futa Fata, we can finish it. But the Futa Fata is so special that, see, so he said, it's either myself and my son go home for the Futa Fata, or your son can get it. So the king sent his son and a few messengers as well to go to the Gabon Sayer's wife and get the Futa Fata. So after a while, the Gabon Sayer's wife, who was, who was a Kerry woman, so she was obviously very, very wise and very clever, saw the, the gang approaching and the king's son, the prince, getting off his horse and arriving at the door, telling her the story that the, the castle couldn't be finished only for the Futa Fata and would she have it? And of course, the wife had a fair idea of what was going on as well. She had another feeling. So she brought the prince in and she had this huge big bin where she would keep bread and stuff and all. As a huge, a person could very easily fit in it. And she put her hand in and she said, "'Tis in here now, your highness." And she had her hand, she said, "'I can't get it.' She said, "'You're a better Bashdoon of a thing now. You put your hand in there and try and reach over for it. It's over at the end there.' And the prince went in, he had his hand and he was groping around in, in the bin. And what did she do? But she cut the two legs of the prince, threw him in and locked the bin. She went out to the messengers and she told them, go back to the king of Munster now and tell him that there's no way he'll see his prince unless she sees her husband and son back here first. So the messengers went back, they told the king the story and he had no other choice only to let the Gabon Sernes son finish the castle and return home. So on their way returning home, they stopped off at the house with the two girls. And they went in anyway that night and the Gabon Sayer said, tell me now girls, how did you get on with my advice? Now the blondie one that was all talk and this and that and the other, she said, oh, she's had a terrible time altogether. Because I went straight over, there was an old lady uh, freshly buried and I dug up her head 
and between the smell and the maggots I got an awful clatter on the side of the head because I put it up next to the range as well and that was no good. I had to throw that out and then the next morning I used said to warm myself with the work I'd done and I was carding fleece to make wool and what should I do but I put it into the fire to warm myself and I got another clatter for that. And then I went, took the sheep skin into the fair to sell it and bring the skin home with the price of the skin. And so that went, I was telling people what I wanted and they were only laughing at me. And then he asked the other girl and she said, well, you said to have an old woman's head by the fire. So I went off and got an old cousin of mine that was living on her own and nobody to look after. And I kept her here and I looked after and I did the extra work to feed her and everything. And she gave me a lot of good advice. And I asked her about warming myself with the work. And she said, the best thing you can do in the morning is to go cutting, is to go cutting wood or breaking kippens. And she said, the best way you can heat yourself in the morning with your work is to start cutting wood and breaking kippens and get the fire going first. Because by the time you have the wood gathered, you'll be warm enough yourself. Then I took the sheepskin into the fair to sell. I plucked off all the wool sold the wool, nearly got the price of the skin, so came home with the skin and the price of it as well. And the Gobon Seer was delighted. And he said, will you please, if you're willing to marry my son, come home and live with me and my wife and you'll have a great time all together. And the girl said, there's only one thing, I'm bringing my old lady as well to give me advice along the way. So the four of them headed off and they got to the Gobon Seer's house. The wife let the prince go and they lived happily ever after. Good evening, Mahagwe, our father, because beg me a kind liverish.